What's up everyone, Jamie here on one half of Don't Tell Mum. This week we're taking a trip down memory lane with an awesome legacy episode featuring DJ, presenter and super mum, Ashley James. Ashley was our first guest on Don't Tell Mum. We caught Ashley just weeks before she welcomed her beautiful baby girl Ada into the world. Now, her birthing experience was quite different than the one she had with her son Alfie. In this chat, we dive deep into how motherhood has impacted her career, particularly her DJ hustle. And let me tell you, as a fellow DJ myself, I totally felt her struggles. Plus, exciting news. If you're in London this week, catch us live at the podcast show on the TYX stage at 2pm with Louise Boys, the founder of Mama Still Got It. Can't make it on May 23rd? No worries. We'll be recording the whole thing and posting it live on Instagram and TikTok. So, a massive thanks to all of you out there who are listening and sharing the Don't Tell Mum Love. It means the absolute world and we can bring you better and better guests. And I feel like we're doing that and we're just getting started. Thanks, guys. I hope you enjoy this episode. Shh, don't tell mum. <laughs> Hello and, and welcome, welcome to, to Shh, don't, don't Tell Mum. My name is Barney. And I'm Jamie. And this is the number one parenting podcast in the world. Please don't Google that. Yeah, definitely don't. But you may notice that we are in a slightly different room to what we are normally in for our podcast sessions because we're normally in Harry Potter's bedroom under the stairs. But Jamie, AKA today... AKA my studio. Thanks for that. Really appreciate it. Yeah, it is your mm-hmm. studio. But we have... Something very special happening today. Do you want to divulge? We have a guest, our first ever guest, and a parent of two to be. (gasps) Oh, my goodness. We are joined by Ashley James. Ashley is a presenter, a DJ, a dating and empowerment coach as well. Very excited to hear more about that. But most importantly, Ashley is a mum to baby Alfie, currently second on the way as well, as Jamie has just said. Ashley, welcome to the Don't Tell Mum podcast. Thank you so much. So weird to hear parent of two. I'm like, I know. not me. <laughs> <laughs> so excited to have you here. Um, and we have so much to talk about. Jamie, you yeah. want to dive on in with well, the first question that we normally talk about Well, yeah, we, we always start with how is Rocket? So how's Alfie doing? He's going to be a big brother soon. Alfie's going to be a big brother in two days. <gasps> and the little shit has decided <laughs> that now would be a really great time to start waking up at three in the morning. Oh. Wow. So he's good, but he's not good. Yeah. <laughs> good it's like he not, knows, yeah, he can feel exactly. the energy. I, I definitely can sense this week, like even Tommy rang me today because he had a little bit of a late night argument, which tends okay. to happen mm-hmm. when somebody wakes up at three in the morning. And you're exhausted. <laughs> and um, he rang me to be like, I'm really sorry. And I was like, you know, we're about to go back into the trenches of newborn and sleep, all of that. And he was like, I just feel like he doesn't like me at the moment, though. And I was like, no, honestly, it's this week. Like, for some reason, Alf knows and he wants mummy to do everything. Oh. But mummy can't do everything because she is about to have a baby in two days' time. And obviously, oh, wow. I'm, like, physically exhausted, like, even lifting him in and out of the high chair. So I don't know if it's because he feels like he's not getting me all or he just knows what's coming. Yeah. Given Alfie's um, personality traits, how do you feel he's going to be as a big brother? Do you have any inkling of what he's going to, how he's going to react or what you think he's going to be like? I think he's going to really struggle because okay. he loves, like, he's just, he likes one-on-one time as okay. like, what he baby mummy's does boy? Yeah. Massive mummy's boy. Okay. But I also think he's going to be the best big brother ever because he's like really nurturing, really caring. He loves family being around. He prefers family that are older than him. <laughs> he's, <laughs> he's never really had to encounter yeah. anyone younger, younger than him. And he really doesn't particularly like younger kids. He's also in that phase where he's not sharing. He doesn't like to share. I mean, who does like to share, let's be honest. But um, <laughs> Is he quite yeah. cuddly? Because like, this is something that we, I don't know, struggle recently, with. But though. more recently, Rocket's starting to become cuddly, but he's never been a cuddly baby. Rocket, as soon as you go to cuddle or go for a kiss, he does this whole like, yeah, yeah, and leans away. <laughs> and you're like, wow, I just wanted a cuddle for one second. In and the last just two weeks, he started to become, to the point where I, I was only breastfeeding for eight weeks and stopped putting him on formula kind of regret that decision however it was i was said to barney the other day i was like thank god i didn't breastfeed him this long because he's clingy with me now and i was like imagine how clingy he'd be like if i was still breastfeeding he wouldn't want to leave me at all and that's only recently we've noticed how clingy he's been with me like i'll put him down and he'll start crying straight away i guess kids just go through phases, they go though, through don't phases they? yeah up and down it, it's um, because we're such new parents i still feel like we're so new to it we're still going through the trenches of it all 
Mm. I, to be fair, I still feel like a new parent. I'm like, I wonder at what point I will feel <laughs> yeah. like I'm not new. I'm experienced. Because yeah. it's always the different phase. My friend said to me the other day, she went, I love this phase now. She goes, every phase, every new chapter, I'm like, oh, actually, I prefer this one. I prefer this one. And I was like, really? I don't feel like that. <laughs> See, Alf loves a cuddle, but only for a brief period. And then he's quite happy just like playing on his own. Yeah. But what really annoys me is he'll kiss everyone else apart from me. <gasps> so if I say, can mummy have a kiss? He like turns his cheek. He's like... Oh, cold shoulder. So <laughs> annoying. Outrageous. Yeah, but oh. last night in the bath, Tommy said, give mummy a kiss. And he tried to give me a kiss, but because of my bump, I couldn't lean in enough. And then yeah. the moment uh, went. And I was like, I almost got a kiss. Oh, no. I'll take it. <laughs> <laughs> I got a half kiss. I mean, yeah. we normally uh, open up our you know, the beginning segment of our show with what's new with Rocket. So typically we talk about anything that's new that's happened in the last week. So has Alfie hit any milestones this week or is there anything mm -hmm. new that he's doing? Or do the milestones st slowly creep wider and wider apart because, you know, he's getting older now? Yeah, mm -hmm. I think th that... I mean, he's definitely becoming more and more of a dude every single day. Like, you really see the personality now, and I feel like it's so much more fun because instead of feeling like you're trying to entertain someone, you can actually engage. So he'll, like, choose what books he wants to read or he chooses what toy he wants to play with wow. with you. He tells me, like, when he's hungry, so he's like, Mama, Mama, more, high chair, high chair. Uh -huh. Also very clever because he figured out the high chair is where the iPad is, so quite often he'll fake hunger. <laughs> so that, that's a personality trait coming oh, in, wow. and manipulation. Yeah. <laughs> I love to see it. But... Um, um, yeah, I feel like it's mainly what's new is the sort of I want mum to do everything and I think it's because he knows and the only reason that I don't enjoy that is because I'm having a C-section that I'm nervous about the fact that I won't be able to, even even if I want to, I won't be able to let him like jump and climb on me. How long is the recovery time? Is it six weeks? They say six weeks, but I was told that about birth last time and it was yeah. definitely not six weeks. <laughs> so I'm just being open-minded, but yeah, I'm hoping. I think six weeks is what they say. Mm -hmm. But a lot of people go back sooner. But I'm also, I feel like we all want to get back sooner and be like, I'm fine. And then down the line, we're like, why do I wee myself? Oh, my God, <laughs> yeah. I did that. I did that. I got back <laughs> to work end of March. So it was about three weeks. I wet myself at the gig. Yeah. I don't think you told me that. Did yeah. you not tell me? I, I mean, it was kind of like I, I kind of needed a pee. And then I made like one little... You know, shimmy. <laughs> Loads of pee came out, and I was like, "Oh, okay." I'm like, I'm really oh wet down there. Yeah, because it's a thing. And then I thought to myself, "What am I doing? Why am I suffering like this? I should just be at home with my baby." If it makes you feel better, I have also weed myself at gigs, and it's probably just from alcohol consumption. <laughs> no, <laughs> <Trial birth. laughs> I love that. <laughs> I love that. I love the yeah. honesty. Follow-up segments normally on here. We talk about TikTok turnoffs. Turn now, yes. for us, we call this segment TikTok turnoffs because we are fully invested now in TikTok. You're because a TikTok star. We are TikTok Apparently. people. Yeah. Jamie is is growing like an empire on TikTok and uh, I changed shitty nappies on TikTok, which is fantastic. So do you have, we'll call it social media turnoffs. Do you have any social media turnoffs? The types of videos that you will click on or that you'll swipe down and see and it's just like, oh, God, this again. It's really upsetting me watching this all the time. Because the thing is, is what the algorithm does is they will show you what you want to see. So just say you... Okay, you're a DJ. I'm sure you see so many DJs on the platform and you go, why is this person getting this gig? Why is this person... Like, how many... Wh why am I not getting that? And it, what it, the algorithm does is it shows you what you want to see. Same with podcasting. You'll, you'll do a podcast and then you'll see so many people starting podcasts. And you go, what? But it's actually the algorithm feeding you what you're interested in. So is there anything on social media that you see and you go, oh, I Turns can't stand off. this? I would say I'd have two turn-offs. Okay. okay. If I may. So the first one is all the sort of really like sexist nonsense that you see online and especially on TikTok, you know, the this sort like of the Andrew, Andrew Tate sort yeah, of yeah, culture. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of like trends where it's like choke your girlfriend for banter. Oh and God, that's that it, it upsets me because people actually think that way and people are being exposed to it. But it also upsets me because I got banned from TikTok until I reached out to the PR because I showed a breastfeeding video. It wasn't even about breastfeeding. It was a motherhood video. And I was like, hang on a minute. So that content isn't allowed. Like, literally a mum feeding her child. Mm -hmm. But you're allowed to say that women are, like, basically, like, second-place citizens. It's just, like, wild to me. And the second thing that annoys me is because I get a lot of, like, motherhood content. Sure, it's yeah. people who use their experience as the universal experience. So saying, like, sweeping statements like... Any mother who doesn't want to spend all their time with their child, why even bother having a child? And oh. I'm like, 
I want to be a keyboard warrior right now, but I'm better than that, so I'm just going to look away. Because oh. that's what people do. They don't have to tell someone they don't agree with them. But it's like, have that opinion, but don't like yeah. make everyone else feel shit. Because yeah. it's yeah. not everyone. Like I, lo- I started to be a better mum when I started to be able to leave him. <laughs> yeah, it you, makes you a better parent and like yeah. me going back to work I always said this it made me a better parent I appreciated those moments a little bit more it's amazing how people really do believe I, um, a friend said it to me the other day said that women should be in the kitchen and men should be at work and I was like gobsmacked by that comment gobsmacked couldn't believe it. If anything, I'm always in the bloody kitchen. You are you, in the kitchen. If I didn't cook, you wouldn't eat. I call That's, Tommy Cinderella. <laughs> oh, do you see what I mean? That it's this the completely mismatched all of this stuff yeah. because guys are the chefs. I will take it. I like yeah. it. I like chefing. Uh, you hate cleaning. I hate, but, yeah. I mean, I hate cleaning as well, let's be honest. We do, but I do like, the washing. I do the you washing. You do the washing even you though you hate it, so I appreciate that. What do you both that. do, you and Tommy? What are your jobs? You like blue jobs and pink jobs, that's what we call them. So but, yeah. Tommy's really good at tidying anything that you can see. That's like me! But I'm really good at tidying <laughs> the things you can't see. So if I open a cupboard, <laughs> I'm like, oh, you've literally just thrown Stuffed everything it all in, that in here. The crap out of me. So I'm very good at the organising. I don't, I, I'm very good at doing the washing, not so good at remembering to take the washing out. Yeah. <laughs> that is my flaw. <laughs> it's Some, good to know we're all the same. If I'm, left, <laughs> if I'm left to my own devices, sometimes I'll put the washing machine on five times with the same load. <laughs> I'm like, this is not good. So he, yeah, he's good at taking it out. Yeah. I swear this is my t-shirt, but it looks like it fits Alfie. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's been washed about eight times. What's going on? Oh my gosh, no. There is, like, I took a jumper out the other day. It had bleach marks all over it. And he was like, what have you done to my jumper? I was like, it wasn't me. He was like, you're the it only one. It definitely was <laughs> you. Yeah. So yeah, I'm glad you're admitting it now. I don't know how though because well, obviously we stopped me. using bleach around the house because of the baby. So I'm like, how yeah. has it got bleach marks on it? It makes no sense. How much method do you buy, by the way? Um, do you know <laughs> do you what? Buy method? I, I get uh, the rhubarb one. Yes, yeah. great yeah. Oh, flavor. Ooh, what a spray! Ooh. Tell me you're in your thirties. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> love a method clean. It is I, great. I still love bleach as well though. But yeah. um, I actually me did too. bleach some of Tommy's clothes accidentally <gasps> because I'd bleached the arga, and then I put his clothes to dry on ah. it. But Ever the optimist, Tommy decided to take it to the dry cleaners, and I was like, oh, well, You know, like, they're not going to get rid of bleach stains. You've literally just given them buckets. money. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I mean, can we just talk about the fact that you have an Arga? I'm I know. Very I'm jealous. jealous of that. That, that is see. amazing. How is that, though, with the baby? Because it's always hot, isn't it? It is always hot, but he just doesn't go near it. So just, and he goes he's very, learned. very hot. Okay, so he's learned. Oh, that's I mean, I don't, I don't leave or? him in... No, 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 I, I wouldn't leave him in the kitchen. I mean, there's mm. lots of things that could go yeah, wrong in the kitchen. Exactly. So usually I'm there, but he he's not the type of character who will... He's not a danger mouse. Mm. He's quite a cautious little character. No, that's good. We say to Rocket all the time, so I have a friend, she's very, very cautious. She's like, no, no, don't touch that radiator. It's really hot. And I'm like, if he touches it, he learns that it's hot and he won't touch it again. That's my parenting skills. <laughs> You're like, go on, touch it. Go See what on, happens. Yeah. <laughs> Dare you. I am literally that person. <laughs> Might not be great, but I mean, in some circumstances, I yeah. guess it kind of works. But yeah. um, we, we've already touched on Tommy. You're in this wonderful relationship with this man. You have a second child on the way. We were talking the other day, myself and Jamie, about what we do in our spare time, obviously can vary uh, day to day, but also what you do in your spare time with Tommy once you put Alfie to bed, hopefully, obviously, as long as he's not getting up every five minutes. Myself and Jamie love to sit down, watch a film, watch a series. Not everyone does that. Do you sit down and do you watch series and films together in the evenings when you have your own time? And what is your favourite recommendation for the past two weeks, let's say? Alf goes to bed about eight, a bit late, but yeah. he's, and then once he's asleep, he's asleep. It's great. So I would love to say we sit down and watch something, but we actually go to bed. <laughs> <laughs> rock and roll. Rock and roll. Um, I even went to do rock and roll and I was like, uh, even oh, that, that which kind of proves how <laughs> rock and roll I am. <laughs> um, so, yeah, my excuse is that I'm heavily pregnant. Yes, mm-hmm. which but is an absolute We purpose. love to get into bed and watch a series. Mm. The only issue with this is Tommy is a one episode a night man. <gasps> what? Oh. It's grounds for divorce, but I'm not married. Uh, yeah, yeah, us neither. That's, that's what. True. That's why I'm not married. Yeah, I'm not making I'm a long term commitment. <laughs> one episode and then he goes, okay, good night. Or just yeah. that he's not interested yeah. in like following up, and we have to watch the next one because that yeah. was left on a cliffhanger. I think we got through you in three days, didn't we? I'm very jealous because that was oh, that was wow. my old blessed single life, just binge watching until I couldn't keep my eyes open. Did it, doesn't he know that the baby's coming and that you actually should spend this time? Finishing the series? When when we started lockdown, which was when we moved in together, 
it wasn't a choice. Mm-hmm. Um, he would never watch loads of series because he was like, oh, they're just a bit long. And I'm like, <gasps> what? That's the idea. Yeah, so I got him into The Sopranos and then he was hooked. So now mm. he's like new into this like series world, but he'll watch one. Like last night, Cliffhanger, you. Mm. Very good. Uh, really like this series. It's good. Yeah, really, really good. good. So anyway, Cliffhanger, and then he just turns TV off and I was like, ooh, that's 9.30. We <laughs> <laughs> could squeeze in another one. And he was like, oh, no, I'm knackered. And I mean, Alf did wake up at 3.30. So probably a good thing. But I, I was sat there and I was thinking... What a prick. I could be like, I, I could have finished it by now. Yeah. I could be well into the next series, but yeah. instead, so sometimes I watch a little bit ahead, but then it is really annoying when you have to re watch it because you And like, you have to oh. lie and say that you haven't watched it. I do that quite I wonder, a lot. Yeah, I wonder who does that. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I, I feel like, do we like you this season because we're, you know, either biased or borderline narcissist because it's in the UK? I don't and we're know. like, oh, it's very long. But you know what? I, I do like, like British crimes. Even but it though makes we don't have Britain TV. look, it makes us look like absolute knobs. Yeah, it really and does. Also, Anyone lo- who's a member of Soho House, you look like a knob in this <laughs> series, by the way. It also <laughs> makes me feel like, why has he just walked from Cambridge via East London to his amazing flat in Kensington, which yeah. he would not be able to afford no on way. his one day a week professor salary? So, if <laughs> anything, the like logistical side of me doesn't like it being in London because I'm like that's not even possible. It's that's not, not real <laughs> at yeah. all. All yeah. the other bits totally realistic. <laughs> the Americans are like, I want to go to London and experience that life. Yeah. Oh my god. And we could just, just like, like stay, stay in a flat across from you know the they, kit. I was about to say the Queen. They the make King's it look so good, don't they? House. Yeah. Yes. Um, we have a f- absolutely fabulous. I, I don't know. I'm, ch- I'm chirps in our, ourselves right now. <laughs> segment in the show called Pass the Product. Yeah. Now, we call it past the product because normally we bring a product onto the podcast in order to say, this is amazing. We love using this. So this episode, we would like to ask you, do you have a parenting product that you absolutely love and that you would recommend to anyone because or everyone, sorry, because we like to find these things out because you might come out with something very obscure and we go, that sounds like a gem. We need to buy it. But also you're a new parent. Well, you're a new parent to be. Is there any products that you would avoid now as you've had a baby and then you're having a second or something that you're going actually i need this product i didn't have it last time and i need to make sure that i mean so to give you a bit of time to think possibly we've come up with products prior one of my favorites for rocket is his little tubby time seat so in the bath there's Mm. like a seat that kind of suctions itself to the floor so he can sit in it there's no risk of him slipping over in the bath so it's kind of like he just sits in this seat in the bath and we can bath him not have to worry about him if Roasted we have to go inside. and get the shampoo, we'd have to turn around and see that he's fallen back or anything. So that's my favourite. Mm, you did I, the cuddle time? Cuddle there's dry? There's a cuddle, yeah, there's this cuddle dry thing. It's this towel and you clip it on. Oh, yeah. You've seen it and it's got yeah, the hood got and you wrap it up. But it didn't last that long. When he hit six months, it's too small. But then what I would do differently this time round is I'd get a Duna car seat. They're amazing. Yeah, I've got one of those this time round. It's a spinning you? one. It's basically... Wait, I want Ashley to explain this to me, actually, very much. Oh, maybe you'd explain it better now. I feel like a lot of pressure. (laughs) There you go. So a doona (laughs) is a car seat that turns into a pram. So (gasps) if you have a baby that sleeps in a car, you can just flip it out. But also Mm -hmm. if you're going out and about, the one bad thing is it doesn't have storage underneath. Mm. Okay, yeah. So we didn't use it last time because we lived in London, didn't have a car. This time, I'm ready to use the doona. So that would be a a new product that I'm excited about. The doona, my friend just went, and then it was a pram. I couldn't believe it. There's wheels inside it. Yeah. yeah. That's really cool. It's very clever. Very clever. To the point where I was like, that's game changing. What happens in winter, though, when it's really muddy and then you just have to put your dirty wheels in the car? I guess you have a blanket on the seat or something. Okay. Mm. I see where you're coming so from. So I can't, I don't want to give that as it's my not foolproof. product because I haven't used it yet. Mm. So I'll report back. Okay. Yeah, I like that. But what I would say is a rotating car seat. That yeah. was a game changer because you get a few months in and you're like, my back. Obviously, if they're fighting going in the car seat, a little rotating one, it makes it so much easier. And I feel like if I'd have just bought that right from the beginning, it would have saved me having to repurchase. <laughs> it's, it's, a, it's expensive car yeah. seat. So and you're not even are. allowed to resell them. Oh, oh really? Yeah. Like legally you're yeah, not allowed I, to resell I, them? I don't know if it's a legal thing, but they say don't buy secondhand car seats because you don't you know, know if they've been in a crash or not. But I feel like that's quite slim. Yeah, I feel like... <laughs> and also, if you ever sell or something with a car seat, typically you're going to either give it or sell it to a friend who's having a baby. Like, you're not going to... I don't think we'd sell to strangers because like you know enough people. You're not meant to yeah. buy a secondhand helmet. I just can't understand how expensive prams are. Prams Absurd. are, honestly, minimum £1,000. 
that is so... And then you've got the cot on top. And then you've got the changing table. Saying that, we weren't going to buy a changing table. Thank God we did. Because look at your TikTok. You wouldn't be anywhere without that changing table. <laughs> Damn <laughs> right. That's right. I mean, yeah. I, I, I think that, you know, having... This was something that Jamie touched on yesterday. That having... A, one child, you know, comes with a hell of a lot of expenses, as you can imagine. And then she said, I don't know how people can afford two or three. And I'm like, we've, or, you've already got everything. So ultimately, it's just hand-me-downs. You have all of the, the gubbins, let's say. Mm -hmm. You maybe need a second pram or a second seat for the pram. But ultimately, you've got everything. Yeah, I think also you realise you need a lot less. So this time yeah. around, I'm like, You're overloaded with I don't stuff need an entire one. wardrobe of baby clothes because she'll <laughs> probably be in them for like a couple of months. Mm -hmm. So I'm just using all of our sold stuff and like maybe getting a few nice little like yeah. girly bits. Um, but I mean, I had so much with Alf. And also I spent a fortune on this thing called a snoo, which is like a bedside bassinet, but it's rocks and it's meant I've to mimic seen, the womb. Does that work? Whoa. It worked for us for like two days. You know when they're like really tired because they've just given had a baby? Given birth, yeah, yeah, yeah very weird if they've given birth. Been squished out. Yeah, so yeah. they're really tired, so it lulled us into a false sense of security. But also, I found it really fiddly to lift him in and out. He was like a really heavy baby, and I'd had like, I mean, I had stitches, which I will have this time in a different place. So yeah, I feel like all of that stuff. I'm just we've, we're less stuffed out, but yeah, I feel like the cost of it. I'm hoping because we're doing meals and stuff anyway, but it's just childcare. Is Alfie in a bed already? Yeah, he's in a toddler bed. Oh, wow. We did when that did for you... about 18 months. Really? 18 months, okay. We're discussing, you know, when's he going to Well, go I've heard it's when babies start, like, to wake up in the middle of the night is when you want to transition them from a cot to a bed. And then afterwards, God knows what to do. <laughs> See, Alpha just never a cot person because we end up, ended up co-sleeping for the first year. Mainly it was just survival. Hmm. And then the cot just never worked for us. Like, every time we try and we get him to sleep and then we try and put him in it and he'd wake up. And it, it was just... The cot just wasn't for us. And then he'd get really upset in the night if he woke up. And if we went in, then he'd like sort of hit himself against the cot trying to like get to us. So then we'd have to get him out. And then when we got him out, we couldn't get him back in. Oh, so toddler bed was actually a game changer for us because it made putting him down was like went from an hour to 10 minutes max. Mm. And now now we just like put him in it and walk out the door and mm. he, he loves it. So um, the only annoying thing is that obviously they can run through once they're awake they can well, run through to you but I actually really like being woken up to a little baby <laughs> coming in are, they, are you on the same floor <laughs> yeah oh that's nice well actually saying that our one year old can get up the stairs and down the stairs himself but he's the first line of defence if any burglar decides to come into our house by the way he's <laughs> Honestly, on the first floor so we're true. on the second floor <laughs> <laughs> controversial right, come on rocket uh, but our Getting nephew weapons. They, they did this technique where they locked the baby in, in the room so he wouldn't actually escape and go down the stairs in the middle of the night or during nap time or something. What do you feel about locking Alfie away when he goes down for sleep? Have you ever done it? Basic, Not for me. Yeah, basically mm. what had happened is they were downstairs in the in the kitchen and uh, in, the, in the middle of the night, sorry, uh, they'd heard steps going down the thing, and they were just nervous that he was going to like trip and fall down the stairs or do something that he shouldn't in the middle of the night while they were asleep so they were like our only he kept doing it even though you know they were trying all these different yeah. ways they said we're just going to have to lock the door and so they locked the door and he would then just chill in his bedroom and play with but his toys until a time but yeah, yeah that we, could, that's we do we have, have stair gates yeah we have stair gates funny enough Tommy and I often argue about this because when he wakes up early he's always been a bit of an early riser Tommy's like we need to lock him in his room and I was like what is that going to do? He's just going to get really distressed, like banging against the door. But, mm. you know, so it's like, if it was that we were struggling to get him down to sleep, then we could look at things. But like, what can you do once the child's awake? You can't mm. be like, yeah. So we're mm. going to try with a, go a grow clock, which is like a light. Yeah, I've heard about this. So this we'll see. Nice. But um, yeah, I feel like, I mean, I'd like to think that if ever any, if there was ever anything wrong with him, whether it was like toothache or a nightmare or whatever, he wouldn't feel like, Oh, I'm locked in my room. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. What can but, I do? Yeah. I mean, each to their own, really. But, yeah, I feel like I want him to know that we're there. And that's what I keep trying to say to Tommy because he's, like, gets really stressed in the night. And, look, I don't like particularly being woken up either, but I'm like, I just want him to know that we are Accessible. there because I found then hopefully he doesn't have – he doesn't – he'll end up being like, oh, I'm awake, but I can just go back to sleep because I know my parents are there. That's so, nice. So I like that. We'll see. It might oh. all change. <laughs> Maybe ask, ask me when I've got two, and I'll be like, they're both locked in. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> have, you, have you got two nurseries then? Have you got? Are you going to put them in the same nursery? <laughs> this is what I mean by second time round. You realise you don't need as much. I was like, <laughs> give her a nursery. What? Give up my dressing room? Uh. Absolutely not. <laughs> so we've put a changing table in our room, and um, that's pretty much it. Yeah. Because um, we sure. might end up trying to build another bedroom. 
but I don't know yet. But for now, I mean, she's going to be in our room for the next six months and yeah. Alf uses his room. So, yeah, I don't know what we'll do, but we'll see. Mm. I don't have to think about it yet. Ashley yeah. James, you talk openly about the lack of discussion around postnatal recovery. And like you've mentioned in posts that we've seen and talked openly amongst a lot of people about how bounce back culture is rife on social media and how you, it's, you know, almost impossible to avoid. And also there's unrealistic expectations on young people who have, who have children. So how's your mindset now going into your second pregnancy about postnatal recovery? Do you have a certain mindset about how you're going to cope? Cause I know it's going to be a very different kind of recovery or do you have things in place that you already know? Okay. This is what I've previously experienced. I kind of feel at least a little bit more prepared for this. Yeah, so postnatal recovery, it actually like makes me so cross that the only narrative around it seems to be, will you lose the baby weight or not? And you'll be back to normal in six weeks. Mm -hmm. And you see people like, you know, going back to exercise, which by the way, great to go back to exercise, but before they've ev they even know if they're like properly healed. And I just feel like that's such a rubbish thing that our healthcare system doesn't even like check. Like any other operation I've had in life, you get checked out and you, they make sure you're recovered. Whereas like childbirth, it feels like there's so much help up until the baby's here. Then you're like, you're Hi. on your own. Yeah. Um, and it's, it's really bad. Like I can't even imagine what it must cost for the long term. But the thing that annoys me is like we are judged on if we lose weight or not. And it's like nobody gives a shit if we're like weeing ourselves or pooing ourselves or, you know, like have pain. So I had like pain um, with any form of like intercourse for 20 months. Wow. And I felt broken because also there's months. all this pressure as well around like, don't lose the romance. Yeah. yeah. And that's, th Tommy was a bit like mad at me about that as well. Cause he was like, do you really think that I want to hurt you? Like you, you, you think of what, that I would like leave you or cheat on you because you gave birth to my child. He was like, that's such a like nonsense mm. thing that belongs in the past. And it's certainly not what my opinion is, but it did feel like the only time when I did lose weight, cause I had COVID and then I was ill or depressed or whatever it was. And people were like, wow, what's your secret? And I was like, depression I don't yeah. know. Oh, wow. you should try it it's yeah. great so this time around I think firstly I don't have that expectation that in six weeks I'll be back to normal mentally physically spiritually <laughs> emotionally mm -hmm. uh, so I know it might take longer than that and number two I have a lot more support the first time around obviously we couldn't because of lockdown but this time around Tommy's mum's going to come and stay my mum's going to stay for a week so we just have someone that I'm not having to I feel like first time around, I was like, look at me, I'm walking around and I've got the baby carrier on and I can lift things again and I can do this and I can do that. Whereas this time I feel like it's actually a really nice time just to be able to chill and mm. listen to your body. And the more that you kind of rest and hopefully the quicker the recovery. So my plan is just to watch series more than one episode yes. hopefully and actually Tommy, finish them in listening. one day yeah. Tommy come on mate you've got to let her at least watch more than one episode at least she'll be like oh we'll have a binge watch let's watch two yeah. <laughs> yeah. you know what though I find it bizarre how the doctors don't check for ab separation because that's I, I was like worried. I was having sleepless nights over whether my abs would ever come back together. I even bought one of those waistbands, those stupid freaking waistbands to put back together. I mean, it's still not bad. My belly button is still an outie and it will yeah. forever be. And I can still get three fingers in between that part there. But why, why don't they check? Why isn't that part of our NHS to check our abs? Because at the same time, you, your abs are separating to make room for your baby. We should be able to check that and down below as well. I, it, the yeah. only time I think that the, the doctors had asked whether I was okay down below was after childbirth. I just actually love the term down below because I just think it's so funny because imagine if we said about our arms, like, the over there's or like, <laughs> yeah. I don't know, it's just like... The upper bubs. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> How's your upper bubs? Yeah. Um, yeah, it's so funny, but you're right. It's just like, the, and I think because it's such a taboo, and this is why yeah. I talk about it because lots of us don't want to admit whether it's like incontinence or prolapses or whatever mm. it should be. And also, people often don't want to hear it. But then the problem is we're suffering in silence, be that with pain or the embar embarrassment of yeah. not knowing if you can do a DJ gig without weeing yourself or yeah. whatever it might be. And I think the reason that they've got away with such poor women's health for so long, be it the menopause or endometriosis or whatever it might be, is because we're too embarrassed to talk about it or we feel like we're the only ones. And actually, yeah. it's an absolute outrage because also, even from... I'm no businessman or economist, neither is anyone in our <laughs> government, <laughs> but, <laughs> but surely it makes more sense to like fix the issues now rather than... Pay for it later. Yeah. yeah, I've always said this: fix it right at the beginning, otherwise you're gonna have so many other problems down the line. It's like that pothole. 
gets bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. Just fix the What, the, the one that destroyed our car yeah. that's now in the shop? Yeah. yeah. You know, we were talking about flat tyres. We got home and had a flat tyre. <laughs> Potholes yeah. are just so annoying, though, oh. because it's like, what? And then you see all the, like, patchwork on the road, and you're like, just surely in this day and age, if we know that potholes are caused by, I don't know, what is it, weather? Uh, I, Can't I we just don't make, know. I think it's like the rain and then the sun and then the cold. Mm. Surely oh, there's sure. a better material out there. There's a guy in Manchester who used to go round to all the potholes on the floor and used to draw dicks on them so that it would force the council to do something about them because they would have to go and at least like remove it. And he called himself Wanksy. Well, I know what there I'm doing in my uh, yeah. maternity leave. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> no, I honestly think, because I even said to Bart, I was like, can we go to the council and actually send them the bill for the tyre yeah. that we've changed, the crack on the actual will that we have to change now? Because yeah. it's costing us, I think it's cost us a grand and a half so far. We've been, because of we've been carless hole. for like two days as well, which can, you know, be a huge impact in our lives, be it, you know, if something goes wrong with Rocket and we're calling taxis or something mm. to try and get somewhere. And I actually I... fell in a pothole, a pram tipped, and uh, me and Al fell onto the road. <gasps> yeah. Did you Whoa. hear that Rod Stewart actually took it into his own hands and he started fixing potholes around no. his house? Yeah. Did he? Google it. Of all people as yeah. well, Rod Stewart. <laughs> Good, man. Good man. <laughs> so we have a segment on our show called Besties with Oh, it's the best part. It's okay. the best part of the podcast. <laughs> I allowed Jamie to have this section of the podcast. Be- have Jamie you noticed he's the quite... presenter of the podcast. Jamie has quite an unhealthy obsession with Britney Spears. It's not an unhealthy obsession. It kind of is, it but, isn't. you know, she loves Britney Spears. Been a huge fan since she was very, very young. And Jamie kind of keeps her ear to the ground about everything that's happening in the life of Britney Spears. And Britney's obviously had a very detrimental few years given the conservatorship mm. that she's gone through and the media suffering that she's had to go through, the scrutiny. And we kind of, in a way, want to do a little bit of digging from someone who's, you know, been in the media a fair amount in this country have you been either the target of or have you suffered from the media twisting stories fabricating things about you has that had a detrimental effect on you personally and because i personally you know who knows what's true and what's not true i mean 90 percent of it's not true i can imagine ever in that newspaper who shall not be named. But, yeah, what's your experience been like? I mean, obviously, I'm in no way on Britney Spears' level, and <laughs> I can only imagine, actually, how hard yeah. it is on, like, her or Meghan Markle or any of the kind of, yeah. you know, yeah. big names. I was friends with Caroline Flack, who obviously had it in a big way, um, so I can I can sense how bad it can be when you have that sort of level of fame and notoriety and how savage it is on my level yes I've had it and I find it really hard and one really good example of that is um there is an article in not the one that shall not be named but equally as awful the sun and it said something like Ashley James who's famous for dating famous men and getting her boobs out it was honestly something like that and I was like First of all, lazy writing, but yeah, yeah also horrendous. But I was oh, like, also, God. who are the famous men? Yeah, like, <laughs> like what? I was like, this is like, literally, it made me feel anything. so shit about oh. myself because I thought, is that really what I am or like what people see me as? And yes. anyone who doesn't know who I am, who, by the way, I couldn't, I don't expect people to know who I am, but it's like, people are going to be reading that and it just makes me feel so like insignificant or yeah, stupid or like is that everything I've worked towards and my intelligence or anything else has just been like boiled down to essentially the way my body is mm. and my dating history which annoyingly I've never even confirmed so they think that I dated someone so this is where it all started so it's like for ages it was like Ashley like... James her rumoured flame her rumoured oh, flame oh my god and I was like, so now you're telling me that I'm famous for dating someone that you don't even know if I've dated or not <laughs> and for getting my boobs out. But, like, also, sorry that I've got big boobs. Like, they are, they are out because they are attached to my freaking body. And it, it's like this, like, misogyny that we always read in the media. You know, every time it's like Ashley James flaunts her cleavage as she steps outside and it's like me wearing clothes. And it's like, <laughs> I'm, I'm honestly not flaunting them, but it plays into this idea that we're asking yeah. for it or, you yeah, know, that we're... craving attention. Yeah, craving like, attention. Yeah. And what they do is, so... Because a lot of the time I post on social media, it could be about postnatal bodies or bodies in general or the fact that, you know, it shouldn't matter what size our boobs are. Like, it's not... We're not wanting attention. Yeah. Usually we actively don't want the attention. Mm. So please, can you look at my eyes instead of my cleavage? Because you've made me, like, second-guess my entire outfit choice mm. and made me feel, like, really cheap. And then they'll twist that to be like, Ashley James laments having big boobs. And then they'll hunt out 
a picture oh. of me, which is like from when I used to model. So it'll be like a lingerie picture, which is more like male gazy. And it's like Ashley James laments people focusing on her breasts. So then obviously oh. naturally the keyboard warriors are like, well, she shouldn't do pictures like that then, if she? Yeah, of course. <laughs> so yeah, I'd say that's where I get really upset, particularly that Sun article. And it said something like from milking cows to, I can't even remember what it was. Basically, was this after I grew up in you had the from. baby as well? I was pregnant with Alf, but I remember sitting in the park in lockdown. It was the only place we were allowed to go. And just, like, <laughs> crying my eyes out, oh, being God. like, I've worked in this industry for 10 years and I've worked really hard. And also, I've really... Like, I could have dated famous men if I really mm -hmm. wanted to. I, I, I could have even sold stories if I really wanted mm -hmm. to. But I've, like, actively tried to... Well, not even tried not to do that. I just wouldn't do that. And, like, you're still just boiled down to, like what you look like and who you've dated or not so yeah I think that's from my like really Z list level of it so I can't imagine how yeah. it feels to be like a Meghan Markle where you literally just have people sources a source claimed oh it really mm. frustrates me just when I read it just outside your house that's yeah. what scares me like obviously the Kardashians and Britney Spears and whatever they literally are just tented up outside your house waiting for you to leave like I love, vultures I love just... what Blake Lively did after announcing she was pregnant because she saw Paps um, like waiting outside of her house that she just posted a bump pic and like obviously she shouldn't have to do that but she was like to the people waiting outside my house sorry you didn't get the exclusive and just like put it on herself oh, nice. and then when she announced it it was just after the Super Bowl with no bump it was brilliant she's so good but that's the thing like this is what annoys me about the Britney Spears conspiracy this was going to be my question I was going to say what is new with Brit because that's typically what we talk about about. What's happening with um, the Britster? Even though she put a statement out saying that, please, fans, don't call the police on me. I'm absolutely fine. They're still going above and beyond. And she keeps... The thing is, is you put it really, really well. Imagine a animal, like a, just say a whale, being trapped in a cage for years and years and years and slowly changing, slowly changing. Then they release it back into the wild. That whale's not going to be the same whale as it was before. It's the same with Britney is she's not the same woman as she was before because she's been in a conservatorship for that long. But we've just got to stop and let her live her life. She's, they, they need to... I don't know how Beyonce does it, but I swear she pays the paps to keep everything at bay. Like, don't mm. write about me. Somebody has to be like, give them a friggin' check and tell them to fuck off and stop posting on social media. But if she wants to post on social media, she should be able to do what she wants to do without being judged. But she will be judged because of the who she was beforehand. It's really I feel like sad. we're very quick to judge women a lot more than men. If you look at someone like Kanye West, like mm. no one's put him in a conservatorship and he's yeah. talked some really dark stuff about Nazis and other things and it's like everybody almost sympathises with him. So whenever you bring it up, they're like, oh, mm. I know, but he's bipolar or, you know, he's suffering from mental health. Mm. And we should, uh, by the way, we should absolutely have sympathy for mental health. But why is it when it's a woman, it's like you almost can't wait for her to step out of line. Like, yeah. lock her up, yeah. lock her up, get her back in that conservatorship. And she definitely has, you know, some, you know, she could have bipolar. I mean, she takes what? The laundry list of drugs that was like, announced that she takes well, for her... all these different disorders. And yet we go, oh, my God, look at what she's posting on Instagram. What an idiot. And it's like, it's not really... It's not, fair. it's not really fair. But they were making her take a drug she didn't need, and that's what it, exa made. as well, which is even and worse. And what she's done is she stopped the drugs because she doesn't want anything in her system, which is really dangerous to do. If you just come off um, antidepressants, it really affects you. You have to slowly come off them. You have to wean yourself to off of them. Yeah. But this is what we know from the media, right? We're talking from the media standpoint on what we've read. It could be all rubbish. I think this is the thing, it's like learning to, even if the newspaper that shall not be named is your guilty pleasure, it's kind of like taking it with a pill to, pinch of salt and being like instead of being like, how dare Meghan Markle do this? Mm -hmm. It's like, maybe she actually didn't maybe it's just like some weird source that's just making up shit for headlines exactly. yeah. Um, but yeah. yeah. I, I find yeah, uh, all of them can jog on, they all kind of do very, very uh, untrustworthy things that basically I don't understand why you can then uh, appreciate or it, it makes it very difficult to appreciate or, you know, have sympathy for journalism in any kind of way, shape or form because of the amount of negativity that they throw out there because people are more likely to react and um, interact with negativity online, especially. Mm -hmm. So they're just feeding you negativity because it gets people talking. So there's just like no positive news 
stories out there and it's so few and far between that it slips through the cracks because there's so much overwhelming negativity that they're either piling on you or they're just trying to, you know, grasp at straws to find something negative about Meghan Markle, about Britney, about whoever they can to shove in your face. Do you know what's really restored my faith in journalists, though? I've got really into crime podcasts, mainly because Tommy will only watch one episode at yeah, night. Tommy. So then I have to put my headphones in and I started listening to the I'm Not a Monster podcast. Mm. So okay. the first one's about an American woman who ended up joining ISIS with her kids and the second one's about Shamima Begum. And now I'm just hooked. I'm, I'm listening to one about this um, journalist who got killed in Sudan. And it's like this, was he a rebel fighter or was he a journalist? Because it's all very like mm. lines crossed. And the journalism there is amazing because it's like, wow, these people literally risk their lives to try and find stories. So... It, when you say journalism well, bad, we mean showbiz. I mean, because yes, of course. I mean, I've yeah, got well journalism. into this and I'm like, wow, but bloody journalists, what what great people they are, putting their lives at risk yeah, and also giving us a great story on a podcast. Yeah. There you go, exactly. I, I stand corrected. I'll give myself a, mini, <laughs> a miniature, <laughs> miniature slap on the wrist because I did mean showbiz, but I should have stated. Uh, we actually have a final segment that we love doing. No, I'm joking. What am I talking about? That's not a segment that we've done before. Which one? Oh my God, this is a new one. Which one? Poo. Ah, oh, you added this. He loves poo. He loves talking about no, poo. No, I thought that we'd like to talk about Ash... Oh, my Ash's God. Ash's poo. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, actually, it's Alfie's poo. I thought that I we would love... to talk about Alfie's poo either, We're going to swap stories, Ashley, because being parents, oh, we gosh. deal with poo a lot of the time. And I know it sounds horrendous, but, you know, I've made... a. a partially made a living now off of changing nappies on TikTok. Go figure. So this is something that we do on a day-to-day -day basis as parents. We see it. We become immune to it. The sights, the sounds, the smells. So one thing I would I like to... I am not immune. <laughs> one thing, my nostrils, I think, are singed at this point. Oh, so, God. you know, the other day, it is what it is. I mean, this morning was... I mean, you saw everything that he ate the day before. Thanks, babe. Yeah, yeah everyone wants to know this. <laughs> So what I will say is um, we are going to swap stories. And what I'm going to tell you is what is the most horrendous poo story you have of Alfie's. And to give you a little bit of time to mull over this and think about it, I'll divulge into one that we had fairly recently. Please enough. do. And if you don't want to say it, please don't feel obligated <laughs> to actually have to <laughs> divulge this information because this is this is new to me too, really. Well, in the first three weeks of January, we took a trip to Indonesia. I had a job in Jakarta, the capital, and then we went to Bali for two weeks. Now, wow. Bali Belly is quite... A typical thing. We were very fortunate that Rocket did not get Barley Belly while we were there. However, we took him to a restaurant, and most restaurants there are pretty well equipped equipped for children I will say uh, hats off to them mm -hmm. and in this particular restaurant they provided us with a high chair which was fantastic high chair did not have a belt on the high chair <laughs> so instead we used their sofa cushions in order to wedge him into the high chair so that he couldn't just stand up <laughs> crawl out of the high chair yeah. and do a nose dive so what we decided to do is wedge him in with those pillows everything was fine and dandy we ordered food we ate our food and then upon eating our food I thought I better check Rocket because, you know, we just haven't in a while. Let me have a little sniff. I went to lean over just to have a quick look and lo and behold, a shit explosion had gone out of his nappy, up his back and all over the pillows of but the restaurant that we had gone into. So I had yeah. to very quickly and stealthily remove him from said high chair plant the pillows, pillows face down so that you couldn't see the shit stains on the pillows <laughs> and run and fireman carry him to the other side of the room into the bathroom, put him on the floor while he screamed the house down and I had to throw his outfit away. It was that covered in turds. So, Ashley James... So that is my poo story. Now, Ashley, I hope you've tuned one up and you've got one on the first tee and ready to smack it down the fairway, <laughs> as I would say in golf terminology. What's yours? God, it's really hard to narrow down a poo story, isn't it? There's, <laughs> there's so many to pick from, but I would say the most recent is uh, just the other day. So weirdly, my only thing that makes me sick in this pregnancy is poo. Like, the smell of it. Oh, oh no. Yeah. So I normally try to, like, wait. It doesn't matter how long I have to wait for Tommy. <laughs> I, will, I will wait for him. But he wasn't back at this point. And Alf had done a poo. And I was kind of, like, waiting for Tommy. He was at the gym. It was first thing in the morning. So Alf was just, like, bombing around in his room. And, the, like, honestly, I just can't explain it. The smell of it makes me gag. But if I knew if I were to try and change it, it would yeah. be projectile vomit. And there's been a lot of situations in pregnancy where I've had to run to the loo, projectile vomit, but I've just had to leave Alf, like, with poo all over him. <laughs> so oh it gets wow. messy. So this is, like, that's thing. bad. Mm. Like, that's bad, yeah. So this uh, specific time, 
we were in his bedroom and he, he's never done this before, but he went to like itch his bum in his nappy, but I, there was a poo in there. So then he came out with poo <gasps> fingers <gasps> and he's in like his beautiful bedroom. Oh. And I was like, no, Alfie, no. <laughs> 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 Literally just like poo, poo smears everywhere. So I was trying to find the wet wipes, but he also hates being wiped. Like yeah. his fingers, his hands, his well, face, oh, like wow. everything. So Tommy just arrived <laughs> to me, <laughs> like, try not to project our vomit. Poo literally, like, smeared hands oh, everywhere. No. And he was like, would you like me to get this one? And I was like, yeah. yes, please. <laughs> yeah. A quivering mess in the corner, just being like, please sort it out. Oh, oh my, wow. You're just in the corner, like, recoiled in horror. Oh my, I hope Alfie's it goes. Alfie's running around like, yeah. Listening to you introduce it, being like, we're immune to the smell. And I was like, are we? I just, like, my <laughs> nostrils are just, like, the hair in my nostrils is, like, singed off. I've The amount of absolute kamikaze turds it's that have come out of his thing, ass. It's a pregnancy thing, though, I think. I've had a lot of pregnant women cannot deal with the oh, smell. Oh, yeah, because, like, you, you get... Everything's naturally, you get sensitive. aversions, don't you? Get, you yeah. get aversions to, whatever, chicken or tuna or olives or loads of people have different aversions to, I think, different foods mm. and smells, but I can imagine poo. Just... I mean, I feel like everyone should have a bit of an aversion to poo. Oh, of course I, I do. I don't enjoy weird it. if anyone was like... <laughs> yeah, I love that smell. I just, you know... <laughs> like baked <laughs> bread. I kind, kind <laughs> yeah. of just go into... I go into poo mode and I'm like, right, let's get you up. Boom, boom, boom. And I, it's almost really, like I don't think about it. Sometimes I find you quite rough with him because you're doing so fast. Because he's like, a warrior. Please, please be careful. <laughs> and he's like, ah, 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 the whole time. Because I'm like, if I'm not assertive and I'm like, right, get the legs, right, lift the legs up, right, sort this out. He, it gives him, if I'm floaty with it, he'll just start grabbing his, his junk and it's covered in poo. Or oh, he'll I start hate it when he spit, that. he'll start like alligator Spinning. rolling. And yeah. you're like, no, don't roll over and you're trying to stop him. So if I'm like assertive with him, I'm not rough, I'm just assertive to be like, stay there, don't move. You just have to hand them gonna... an item in, in the, yeah. the hand and then they can play with it. Because honestly, it's a two-person job now. It really has become a two-person job. These nappy change videos yeah. have slowly like diminished. Hard. <laughs> he, he'll see the camera, he's like obsessed with the camera, so he goes to grab the camera and you're like, oh my God. And then if he's touched his... Poo, pooey willy, he's got shit on his fingers and it's, oh my God. Yeah, I'm intrigued <laughs> to, it's going to be a whole different ball game with Two. changing a girl. Yes. I know. White, Easier or white front to Have back. you got a name yet? Yeah. Have you announced <gasps> it? Ooh. No. And do you know why? Because we had a name, a lovely name, told friends and family and Tommy's brother decided to be like, no. sounds a bit like a porn star. Oh. Do not tell someone who's about to become a dad girl for the first time that the name we picked sounds like a porn star oh and it annoyed me because then obviously the name was like ruined and it wasn't I even googled like is this a porn star name because <laughs> I was like if there is a legitimate porn star if she was going to be called Bella Blue I like it Isabella Blue okay. Bella Blue yeah. I like the, I like names that they could be a oh, rock star really but they cute. could be a lawyer so yeah. like Alfie Alfie Rivers mm. so I feel like Alfie Rivers is Alfie quite cool Rivers. yeah mm. Bella Blue but she could be Isabella Blue anyway Ruined it. So now I'm not telling anyone, including you, don't, because I yeah. don't want to Good hear anything bad. No, about you know her what? Name. That's a very smart decision because we were the same as Rocket. Obviously, it's very unusual. And people, I told my dad, and he went, "I knew a Rocket. He was an absolute asshole." And I was like, "Thanks, Dad." I'm sorry. You knew a Rocket. Like that's such a rare name. <laughs> and he was like, "Yeah, well, his surname's Rocket." And I'm like, "Oh, so he's not called he's Rocket not then?" Actually called Rocket. And then we were just like, Andre. "You know what? After that, let's just not say anything because you don't want it's your baby. You don't want anyone's." You know, oh, input. Although well, the great baby. thing about social media is, don't worry, because people will tell you if they don't like the name when you announce it. You <laughs> You're like, yeah. oh feel... shit, Sally two one three zero doesn't oh, like the name. So We're gonna have sorry. to change it. So <laughs> I saw, sorry. I saw Molly May's um, birth story, and she opens it up with, "So this is Bambi." I know everybody hates the name, and I was like, <laughs> "Oh bless her, that's her first baby," and everyone's like insulting the name. I loved the name. I thought the name's gorgeous. Also, it's not our child, so who gives a yeah, shit? Who exactly. cares? You like the name or not? It's not your baby. Yeah. Well, Ashley James, you're an absolute Thank gem. You so Thank much. you so much for coming Thank on the Don't Tell Mom podcast. And you taking are our virginity on guest virginity. Guest virginity with Don't Tell Mom. She's In Don't Tell Mom. Fantabulous studio. We're very excited to be here and to have more guests on here that we can chat to and talk about poo stories. You know what? When this <laughs> releases, actually. You would have had your baby. Yeah. <gasps> dun, dun, dun. So you guys have the scope. Or the, you, the, the... you guys will know the name of the baby before we even release this episode. Let's leave it there. Ashley, you're a legend. <laughs> Thanks so much. I'll see you soon. <laughs> Thank you. Shh, don't